morning. I'm Jean Dunbar, and today I'd like to talk to you about August. August has never been my favorite month. It's still hot, and it's not yet September, and things are going to crank up, and our schedules are going to fill up in a heartbeat. We're going to be so busy we might forget to deal with the things we meant to do last summer. My plan for during the pandemic was to get organized, and that didn't happen. And then I had a plan to do summer spiritual growth, and I'm still working on that. And I'm running out of time. Fortunately, we are provided in the Bible with a restart button. It's called grace. We get to start over lots of times. And for that, I'm really grateful. John McQuiston has written a book called Always We Begin Again. He uses the order of Benedict, the Benedict or rule of order for the monastery as a basis for building one that works for him. And what he says is that the rule sets out a specific daily schedule incorporating work, study, community, and prayer. Benedict wanted the monks in his order to have a balanced life and to have a balance between all those things. In McQuiston suggests that we can recognize the need for a basic daily pattern that incorporates time not only for work but also for friendship, the growth of the mind, and for meditation. We can take control of our work days and build into them time to serve other values. We can establish the habit of stopping throughout the day to be thankful. By such practices, we can change our perspective. In an effort to do that, I get overwhelmed easily, though, by too many rules. The Jesuits have another way of talking about it. Um, what's his name? James Martin. James Martin calls it an alternate way of proceeding. It sounds a lot gentler than a rule of life. McQuiston suggests that as we begin a day, one of the exercises we could use is to expect goodness out of every day. That in itself would set a tone that is helpful he suggests that we have the courage to expect good. I've been looking also at various ways we can give permission to ourselves, permission to curate our input in a way so that we get deep pleasure from what we view or read instead of just distraction a plan to pause during the day instead of hurrying, a plan to renew relationships with God and with our other people, a plan to try new spiritual practices. These sound kind of radical, but Esther DeWall, in her book, Lost in Wonder, described lots of ways that we can renew our relationship with God and with ourselves and tend to that friendship the way you tend to any other friendship because friendship, friendships take time and maintenance and paying attention. One way, she suggests, is centering prayer, that is, praying in stillness without words, becoming available to the presence of God. Another way is a meditative walk, wherein you walk around a small area 
and examine closely through all the senses, the sights, sounds, smells, all of the things available to consider and dwell on deeply. Jesus tells us that when we get overwhelmed, we have another resource. In Matthew 11, Jesus suggests that he, we should come to him, those who, are, who labor, labor and are heavy laden. He says, take my yoke and learn from me. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So in order to get toward that yoke, to be yoked with Jesus and to move out from that position to new growth and new life, I want to close with a prayer from our prayer book. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you. And then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.